by special recording. General Mills, makers of Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions, and Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat, presents The Lone Ranger. With the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Hail, Silver. Away! Now, here's the Lone Ranger. You'll hear it said that someone was born to the saddle. That means he's a mighty good rider. But remember, like anyone else, he had to learn to ride. He probably took many spills doing it. He's good because he practiced. Rode every time he had a chance. In anything, not just riding. The winners are the fellows who train. Champions are made, not born. I'll agree, Lone Ranger. But is there anything besides practice a person can do to help his training? Absolutely. Eat the right foods. I'd like to pass along something the old pioneers knew. Wheat is one of the best all-around foods you can find for staying power and energy. Today's champions agree with the pioneers about wheat, Lone Ranger. Champions choose Wheaties. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Champions are made, not born. Get on your way with Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions. The Lone Ranger and Tonto were riding south at twilight when they saw signs of an impending storm. They camped in a cave and soon after dark heard distant thunder. It's going to rain hard before morning, Tonto. I'm glad we found this cave. Ah, uh, it saved us building shelter. The storm's moving this way. He must hurry. Yes? Me hear something. Sound like railroad train. That's what it is. We're near the new tracks of the Union Pacific. But men still work on tracks. They're working at the end of line, some distance west of here. That train's probably carrying supplies. Sitting near the mouth of the cave, the masked man and his Indian friend listened to the train and the intermittent thunder. They heard the engine labor on a long uphill climb. They heard it moving slower and slower as it approached the crest. And then it stopped. It was the threat of sudden death, not lack of power, that stopped the train. A short distance below the crest of the hill. The engineer and fireman stood in the cab with their hands raised and faced two men with guns. The gunmen's faces were concealed by red bandanas through which eye holes had been cut. You, engineer, keep your hands high until the fireman's tied. If you make a fast move, I'll blow your head off. If you spalpeens are after the payroll cash, you're due for a disappointment. Now, don't tell me it's not on this train. Uh, being on the train is one thing, but getting it off is something different. Uh, that'll hold your hands. Can I gag him, boss? That's not necessary, but tie their feet. And you stay here in the cab and guard them while I go see if the boys need help in getting the cash. Right. They'll need more help than you can give them. You'll find that out. A few minutes later, Pete Larson, the leader of the outlaws, entered the caboose of the supply train and found the guard, tightly bound, lying on the floor beside two iron strong boxes. Three members of the gang looked at their leader helplessly, and one said, Boss, the cash is in these boxes, but we can't get it. Why not? 
They were locked in Omaha and can't be opened until they reach the paymaster at the end of track. He's the only one who has a key. A bullet should smash the locks. We tried it. When? I didn't hear a gunshot. I fired twice just a few minutes ago. I reckon my gun was muffled in this car. It was a rumble of thunder as you fired. And we'll take the boxes with us and use blasting powder on them. The Lone Ranger and Tonto were waiting to hear the train resume its westward journey. Train whistle. Should be starting now. I wonder why the engineer is sounding the whistle. Maybe him signal other railroad men. That whistle can't be heard as far as the end of track. Mm, three time whistle sound. Yes, and three gunshots is a signal for help. Maybe three train whistle means the same thing. Come on, Toto, we'll saddle the horses and find out. In a few minutes, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode out of the cave and headed south toward the new tracks of the Union Pacific. Meanwhile, several miles beyond the tracks, Larson watched his four companions bury the strong boxes in a hole they had made by loosening the dirt with hunting knives and scooping it out by hand. We should have shovels for this kind of work. You're doing all right. Push the rest of the dirt over the boxes. I hate to leave all the cash buried here. We'll leave it here until the hullabaloo over the robbery dies down. Then we'll come back with blast and powder and get the cash. The Lone Ranger and Tonto drew rein beside the halted locomotive and climbed into the cab. The red glow from the open firebox revealed the engineer and fireman tightly bound. The engineer exclaimed, Mask! Oh, the saints preserve us. How many crooks are We're not crooks. Hold oh, still while I cut the ropes. Free that man, Tonto. Uh, tell me what happened. When we were moving slow on the upgrade, five men rode alongside. Their faces were covered and they held guns on us. I had to stop the train or we'd have both been killed. And when we stopped, two of the crooks came into this engine cab and tied us. The others went after the payroll money. It was the cash for the boys at the end of the track. There, your ankles are free. <laughs> Thanks. They've got to see if the guard was killed. Oh, 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 my feet are asleep. They'll be all right in a minute. Mine are asleep, too. Try stumping them, Kelly. <laughs> yeah. Do you know if the outlaws got the money? Yeah. We saw them riding south with the heavy strong boxes slung across the back of one of the horses. Do they have an extra horse? No. One of the crooks rode double. I waited a while, and I got the whistle caught in my teeth and gave the signal for help. They didn't know that it would be heard and understood, but... It was all I could do. Feel better now? Uh Uh-huh. I reckon so. Feels like pins and needles sticking in my feet, but (laughs) I can walk. Then let's see about the guard. When released, the guard told about the crook's futile effort to open the strong boxes. But beyond that, he added nothing to the Lone Ranger's knowledge of the robbery. In a short time, the supply train was once more underway. While it chugged westward toward the end of track, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode south. They could see the trail of the outlaws during the brief intervals when the moon appeared between the gathering storm clouds. Presently, they reached the place where the strong boxes were buried. Here they saw boot prints as well as hoof prints. Easy, Scott. Easy, fella. Outlaws dismount here, Kimasavi. Easy, said big fellow. I wonder why... Hope the moon stays uncovered for a few minutes. Kimasabi here, plenty boot mark. Look like men stamp feet, like color in engine. These men didn't stamp because their feet were numb. Tonto, this ground's been recently turned over. Take away some of the dirt with your knife. Uh-huh. You think something buried here? Yes. Something is buried. My knife just struck it a couple of inches below the surface. Sounds like iron. Might be the strong boxes. In a few moments, the boxes were exposed and found to be securely locked. Help me push the dirt back, Tonto. Uh Uh-huh. We'll leave them buried until after we've talked to Sheriff Tompkins. Uh, Him, friend. Yes, we'll offer to help him catch the train robbers by using these boxes to bait a trap. Black clouds covered the moon, and the masked man and Tonto finished burying the boxes in inky darkness. Then... Rain came in a cloudburst. In an instant, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were drenched to the skin. Rain, wash out tracks. The thieves were heading south. 
think they went to Brentville, the only nearby town. Why do you think they went to town? They'd been going to a hideout. They'd have taken the strong boxes with them. But they wouldn't dare carry them into a community where people might see, so they buried them. Oh. Sheriff Tompkins live in Brentville. And that's where we're going. Easy, 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 easy fella. Come on, to Come on, scout. Sheriff lived alone in a small house near the edge of town. He was an early riser and habitually prepared and ate his breakfast before daybreak. The morning after the storm was no exception. He was frying eggs and bacon when someone rapped on the back door. Hey, it's come in. Good morning, Sheriff. You, by Juniper, I'm glad to see you. It's been a long time since we last met. Well, I'm glad to see you, Sheriff. <laughs> Where's Toto? In your saddle shed, rubbing down our horses. We took the liberty of putting them there. Uh, you did the right thing. If they're as wet as you, they need a rub down. You live. Find my clues in the bedroom. Help yourself. They'll be too small for you, but they'll be dry. While you're changing, I'll put more eggs and bacon on the stove. Uh, just a minute, Sheriff. There was a train robbery last what? night. A supply train. Five thieves stole the payroll money for the workers at the end of track. Well, tell me about it while we eat. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Cause champions are made not for. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Champions are made not born. That's true. For any of us, practice makes perfect. And practice made pretty Betty Shallow, figure skating star of the ship's Sads and Johnson Ice Follies. As a little girl on figure skates, Betty practiced her figure eights. She learned to leap, to glide, to spin. And to help her on to win, she'd really spoon her Wheaties in. Now Betty whirls on flashing blade. Wheaties helped her make the grade. Sure, Betty Shallow grew up on Wheaties, started at the age of eight. Sure keeps a girl up on her toes... There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Now watch Betty whirl away. Hey, hey, hey! She's on her way, on her way. She's on her way, on her way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not for. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. <laughs> to continue. While the Lone Ranger and Tonto joined the sheriff in a hearty breakfast, the masked man told about the robbery and the finding of the strong boxes and suggested a plan to trap the thieves. First of all, we'll need cooperation from the railroad officials to spread word that the stolen money is of a special nature. Special nature? Yes, new paper money in large denominations or new gold double eagles. Well, that should be easy to arrange. The railroad men will do anything I ask when I tell them the cash is safe. What's the rest of your plan? We'll need a few large bills or gold coins, depending on what is supposedly stolen. The banker will cooperate. Then I'll try to get a job as swamper in the cafe. You a swamper? Sweeping floors, washing dishes? <laughs> well, when, when Kimasabi wear disguise, him look like old man. I'll establish myself as an old man who's flat broke. Then I'll suddenly flash money in gold coins or large bills. I see. You want the thieves to think you found the cash they buried, is that it? Yes. If those thieves are in town, as I think, they'll surely spend time in the cafe. And hear about your sudden wealth. That's right. Then their logical move would be to go where they buried the strong boxes to see if they'd been disturbed. Right. It's a good plan, and I'm for it. Sunrise found the sheriff in the stable with the Lone Ranger and Tonto. The three men were saddling their horses. Take silver with you, Tonto. My guns and clothes are in the saddlebags. Ah. 
You get old clothes and makeup? Yes, I'm ready to put on a disguise. Sheriff, it'll likely be after dark when you return from the meeting with the railroad men. Yes, I reckon so. It's a long ride to the end of the track. By then, I hope to be a swamper in the cafe. <laughs> I'll sure drop in to see you. That evening, Sheriff Tompkins entered the cafe and sauntered to one end of the bar. He had not the slightest suspicion that the bartender was the leader of the train robbers. He spoke cordially. Now, is everything going, Larson? Oh, the same as usual, Sheriff. Hey, uh, I see you've got a new swamp here. When did he start work? Well, the boss hired him this morning. <laughs> the old galoot was willing to work for meals and a place to sleep. Was, was he here last night? Oh, I don't know. It was my night off. Well, I reckon I'll question him. I'm always suspicious of men who show up in town just after a robbery. Robbery? What robbery, sir? The train robbery last night. The crooks stole the Union Pacific strong boxes filled with payroll money. You don't say. Yep. Say, uh, what's the swamper's name? Oh, uh, well, we call him Joe, but you, you can't accuse that old man of being a train robber. I just want to talk to him. <laughs> As he approached the man with the broom, the sheriff found it hard to believe that the swamper, who looked so old and feeble, was actually the Lone Ranger. Hey, uh, Joe. Hey, you speaking to me, mister? Yes, I want to talk to you. Did you see the railroad men? Yes, everything you said. Oh. The word's going out that the strong boxes held double eagles. And I'll need a few of them. I got some from the bank here. Oh. I'm dropping them into the pocket of your coat. Oh. Word of the robbery will be all over town by tomorrow night. And tomorrow night I'll start spending double eagles. Instead of sleeping on the bunk provided for his use in the storeroom, the Lone Ranger left the cafe when his work was finished. He made sure no one saw him go to the sheriff's stable, where he spent the night and the following day. It was the middle of the evening when the Lone Ranger entered the cafe. He still posed as an old man, but his humble manner had given way to a jaunty swagger. When he stepped to the bar, Larson frowned and said, well, It's high time you showed up. The boss is mighty sore. Well, let him get sore. Why, you old go and don't give me any sassy talk, because I'm here as a customer. A customer? <laughs> You've got any money? What do you call this, huh? What the... Double eagle. Change it for silver dollars. I aim to try my luck in the gaming room. Where'd you get twenty dollars? I don't see it's any of your business. The Lone Ranger seemed to be well supplied with double eagles in a community where that particular type of gold coin was rarely seen. Presently, as he stood at one of the game tables, Larson tapped him on the shoulder. Hold your bed, Joe. Larson. You're supposed to be behind the bar. You better go back and put your apron on. Someone wants to talk to you in the back room. I'm busy. You better come with me. Uh, uh, all right. Keep the game going, gents. I'll be right back. Open the door and go on in. Yeah. Who are those two men? Go on in. Hey, you needn't shove me. You get more than a shove if you don't answer questions. Yeah. Who's that man? We're asking the questions. Now you listen to me, Joe. You spent around $100 in gold in the past half hour. Where'd you get your cash? A uh, man gave it to me. That's where I got it. Who? Dad read it. I'm not answering any more questions unless I know who's asking them. Now, if you're a lawman, show me a badge or credentials. Oh, trying to be smart, eh? Well, you better get this straight. Let go of the front of my shirt. You talk or we'll get rough with you. Where'd you get that gold? I told you a man gave it. Who is he? <laughs> I'll talk to the sheriff. You'll you... talk to us. Let me at him, Jake. He'll talk after I rake his head with a gun. Larson, you can't let him treat me like this. No. Well, guess again, Joe. You name the man who gave you the gold, or we'll beat you to within an inch of your life. And I'll start with the barrel of this gun. You guess again. The uh, uh, ranger grabbed Trigg's gun with his right hand, while his left jabbed Larson in the stomach. No. He wrenched free from Jake's grip on his shirt and swung the gun in a blow that sent the outlaw sprawling. Oh. He dropped low and charged against Trigg, who hey, fell back against the table. At the same instant, the Lone Ranger fired at the single light in the room, which was hung from the ceiling. In the darkness and confusion, while the three outlaws were helplessly off balance, the Lone Ranger leaped through the window. 
Outside, he ran to the hitch rail and leaped to the back of a strong hey. horse he had brought from the sheriff's stable. Get up, come on now. He was far down the street by the time Larson, Jake, and Trigg reached the front of the cafe. There, there he goes, heading out of town. Hold your fire, Jake. But he stole our gold. You can't hit him at that distance. We were too slow getting through that window. We'd have made better time if we'd gone through the cafe. We then never got through the crowd. Have you wanted to stop us to ask what was going on in the back room? Well, we got to get that old galoot. He found the strong boxes and busted them open. Maybe not. Maybe he told the truth. Maybe he did get that gold from someone else. Well, then someone else found the buried boxes. Jake, go to the hotel, get Blaze and Gimp, while Trigg and I saddle some horses. Are we going after that, Omri? First, we'll see if the strong boxes were disturbed. If there's, we left them, and we needn't bother about the critter. What if the cash is gone? In that case, we'll hunt down that old geezer if it's the last thing we do. <laughs> In less than a quarter of an hour, the five thieves were riding north, retracing the route they had traveled on the night of the robbery. In due time, they reached the place where the strong boxes were buried and drew rain. Oh, 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 oh. They dismounted in the small clearing surrounded by dense underbrush. Larson handed one of the men a spade. Here, Jake, start digging. Right. The ground seems undisturbed, Larson. Yeah, it looks smooth enough. I don't think anyone would bother to fill in the hole after finding the money. Larson! The spade struck one of the boxes. Well, clear away the dirt. Let's have a look at it. As far as I can see, it's just as we left it after bringing it off the train. We've heard enough. Hey, what are you doing? Come on, Torkin. You're all covered. The sheriff, there behind the brush. Put your hands up on the Let him have it. No. The sheriff's not here alone. Oh, my God. Anyone else want a bullet in the arm like Larson got? Oh, not me. My hands are up. So are mine. Take your oh. guns and tie their hands, boy. Don't try any tricks. We're covering you. Yeah, Keep your right. hands high. Larson, they had us surrounded. We've been waiting for you, Crooks. We've heard enough to convict you of robbing the Union Pacific. Now, Larson, you want to know where. Hey, you look like Joe, but your voice is different. Did you think I was really as old as I sounded? Not when you started throwing your weight around. I was about to answer your question, Larson. Yeah. You want to know who gave me the double eagles? It was the sheriff. Well, then you and the sheriff... You and the sheriff were in cahoots. You made us think that gold was found. It's a trick to bring us here. No. Oh, can he make that rope so tight? All right. Sheriff, I'm sorry I lost the five gold coins. <laughs> That's all right. It was expense money. And I reckon the Union Pacific will figure it was a mighty low price to pay for the capture of fine trade robbers. The railroad's mighty indebted to you, mister. The nation will someday be indebted to the railroad. Trains will do much to bring civilization to the West. He must have a silver over yonder. All right, Tonto, we're through here. We meet again, Sheriff. I sure hope so. Thanks for everything, mister. Hey, is that hombre a railroad detective? Nope. He acted like an old man, but he isn't. And he isn't as weak and feeble as he pretended. He's strong as an ox. He's not a detective, he's not old, and he's not feeble. What's more, he didn't show you his own face. As you saw him, he was wearing a disguise. But generally, he wears a mask. He's the Lone Ranger. Diving Doris is 13, and she is a diving queen. She can do a flip because she knows she's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got gold power. There she goes. <laughs> she's feeling her Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. Want go power? You'll get it from Cheerios. That's right. The delicious O-shaped cereal does good things for your body when you have it every morning in a big bowl of milk. Here's why. Every spoonful of Cheerios and milk contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. So a Cheerios breakfast helps give you healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Enjoy Cheerios every breakfast. Then you'll hear... She's feeling her Cheerios. The 
The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Trendle. Produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.